Happy National Signing Day, everyone. And we'll have to take Coach's word for it that the goosebumps are there, even though you were mandated with a long sleeve shirt. That's quite a video, Coach. Yeah, that's impressive. I, I, you watch that and you want to, uh, you know, you just want to go out and play again and, and, and try to relive what we just saw. And uh, uh, that gets me going every time, that's for sure. And I'd like to say this is a National Signing Day beard, but let's be honest, it's pure laziness. But, Coach, let's talk about usually this list is hot off the presses. Not this year, though, for the first time ever, you knew a lot of the kids that were already on this list a couple months ago. Yeah, um, you know, obviously this is the first year with the NCAA having the signing day in December. Um, we were able to sign 16 kids uh, on December 20th, which um, – which really was the first year, so you don't know how it's going to go. I think it worked out really well for us. We were able to get, you know, get a good chunk of the class done, uh, kind of move them along in the process a little bit because they've already signed their NLI. Those kids already have their strength program. They're already getting playbook stuff, so that makes it a little bit easier there. But, uh, you know, we still got th uh, three who signed today and uh, uh, to, to round the class out. So uh, for the first year doing it, uh, I, think it I think it worked well for us, and, and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, have that type of success moving forward with it. That is Colgate head football coach Dan Hunt. This is Eric Malinowski, and this has to be truly an exciting day. Yes, you had the 16 commits earlier, but still, you have to, I would say, a, a deep exhale on a day like this, Coach, where it's all over. You know who the future Raiders are going to be. Yeah, even though this is the second of the two, uh, today's the finish line. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously, when you sign in December, we still have work to do. Our coaches, it's still – you know, they spent a lot of January on the road, and, and you know, now uh, after today it's done and, and, and you can move on and, and everybody's home. I'm sure the coaches' families appreciate the fact that they're home for a little while and uh, at least for a little part of that. And then, uh, uh, you know, but then you, it, it marks kind of a transition of now now we're back to conditioning and spring football. You know, the football season really goes in cycles, and this is the end of, the, of a grind of recruiting and, and kind of moves you forward into the next process of the year. In the NFL, Coach, you see the draft boards. Is, does a recruiting board exist here at Colgate, or is it all done on computers these <laughs> days, or do you have a big old recruiting board somewhere? Um, I would say no. It's all pretty much done electronically now. Even, you know, that's kind of where we're at. And even this year, uh, the kids that signed today, actually, they signed their NLI electronically. It was all done with their cell phones and clicking buttons and um, you know, the fax machine was taken out of the out of the equation today. So uh, but our we're in, the coaches are in constant communications with each other as where each kid stands. And and you, and through uh, some video software we have, our, they can keep track of it on their cell phones. So, you know, a, a guy might be in Detroit talking with a coach in Pennsylvania. And mm -hmm. It's like they're in the same room. But uh, so it's a virtual board, but it's still a board. All right, let's get to the kids, Coach. And uh, Nina Lindbergh must have NCAA basketball tournament hoops on her mind because she broke it down in brackets for us, Coach. So let's start with the Midwest. A couple kids from Michigan. Let's start with the defensive back, Colin Troop. Yeah, Colin's uh, really uh, the type of DB that, that we were looking for. He's one of the kids who signed today. Uh, when you watch him play, I think one of the neat things about him is he can play safety, he can play corner. Uh, when he played offense, he played running back. That's just the type of athlete that he is, uh, which is what we need. We need it. We, when we were looking for this spot, we were looking for someone who could both cover and put him on a corner, but also do what we asked the safety to do, come up and fill. Um, you know, it's really nice to kind of get that Michigan uh, connection going a little bit here. And, uh, you know, he's the second, as we'll get to, he's the second DB for Michigan in his class. And, uh, you know, just he was a really – came up a couple weeks ago on a visit, really nice kid. Uh, he's going to fit in well here. And, and you know, Coach Tacosti had exactly what he was looking for with that um, DB spot, and he found it. And, and, and you know, Colin certainly is, is going to be a kid who's going to be pretty versatile for us. And the second kid named Colin from Michigan, Colin Hurd. Talk about him, Coach. Uh, that's that's the t one L and two L. Yep. Colin Hurd is a two L. That's how we know him. Part Colin is uh, is definitely a, a game changer for us. Uh, he we when we first talked to him, it was specifically about being a boundary corner. But as we got to know him a little bit more. Uh, you know, he's another kid who could probably do a couple of different things. But when we look long term for him in our defense, you need kind of that one corner that you can stick into the boundary. And, you know, he's going to cover the other team's best receiver. And we're fortunate right now to have that with Abu. But you got to look for depth. and You got to look for the future. And, and Colin certainly here, uh, you know, he fits that role. Uh, he's got great feet. He's got great ball skills. His change of direction is outstanding, and, and, and we're, we're real happy for him. And to have, you know, to have two from Detroit, we got to work on the nickname yeah. for that group. You know, uh, I was going with Motown Lockdown. They kind of like that, but we'll let, that, we'll let them decide as they get here. But we're excited about both those kids. That would sound good on the radio. I know that, Coach. Let's talk about the state of Michigan. Trey Kane, of course, on the roster, as you mentioned, too. 
But uh, we were talking before uh, we went on with the National Signing Day show about the last time you had a kid from Michigan. It's been a while, so it's nice to see Colgate making his presence felt in yet another state, Coach. Yeah, th that was another area. You know, we, we, we did it a little while ago with Chicago. And now we said, well, let's keep pushing, you know, and, and we're just keep finding different parts of the country. Uh, you know, we're lucky that we got – Coach Foster, he, he was from out there. Coach Bastion was from out there. So there are some relationships out there. And uh, to be able to go out there and get one last year and two this year, that's kind of how you do it. You know, you get an area and, and you start with one and you let that ball start rolling. So uh, hopefully th this will just be the first of many from out there. And it's always nice when you can, you know, kind of distribute your class to different parts of the nation and, and spread that Colgate name throughout the, throughout the whole country. Yeah, and the ball's been rolling for quite some time in Illinois, Coach, so that pipeline continues. And a familiar school as well, Hinsdale Central High School. And let's talk about Garrett Oakey. Yeah, Garrett's a wide receiver. Um, really fits our system pretty well. You know, uh, when, you, when you look at what we're looking for in wide receivers, there's really two different kinds. Uh, you're looking for that slot type like this who can take a short pass and go the distance, and then you're looking for some bigger kids. Uh, Garrett is certainly fits, the, fits that mold for us as kind of the, the guy who can kind of play in the slot. Um, create some things pre, you know, post catch, and then he's he's long enough and fast enough. If you got to put him out to go deep, he can do that. Uh, you know, we've been real impressed with him for a while. We've uh, Coach Basham really did a nice job. We've had a nice relationship with him. Uh, you know, met his family obviously, and they came up on a trip and had a good time. And uh, just just kind of that long line that we're getting into Chicago here. Yeah. Uh, that 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 we've been successful, and and again, that's another been been another great part of the country for us, and it's growing. You know, each year that that yeah. pool of kids we have from Chicago keeps getting bigger and bigger. And Garrett's just uh, you know, he's the next guy, and and we're excited to see him come in and make some plays for us. Is the one hand catching ability a prerequisite to go to that school, uh, Coach? Well, Thomas, you know, obviously Thomas set that bar pretty high, and I, I think Garrett will be able to be able to roll. And I don't know if he'll get, uh, you know, Sports Center top ten as many times as, as Thomas did in one year, but uh, you know, I'd be, I, I wouldn't rule it out though. There's always going to be a couple running backs on this list, Coach. So let's talk about Jack Soslowski. Yeah, Jack, uh, kid, kid came to our camp, so we saw him in the summer. He also came up to a game during the season. Uh, nice little mix for us, you know. Uh, in the running back position, we do a lot of different things with them. They got to be able to play inside. They got to be able to play outside. You know, he's not the biggest kid in the world, but that's never bothered us. You know, when you look at the height of our running backs, that's never an issue. Uh, we look for kids who can continually move the ball forward, and and he's he's certainly that type of kid. You know, he's got speed enough to be on the outside and be a threat, but also he's shown the willingness to run between the tackles. And then you get a you know get a couple years in the weight room, he'll certainly get big enough. Uh, you know, really good feet, good good high school good high school player. Uh, really came on and, and, like I said, came to camp, did a nice job, came up to a game, kind of got that real nice relationship going with Coach Basham, and we were able to get him into the program we're excited about. Finishing out the Midwest region with another Kansas kid, Coach, Milton Brosh II. Talk about this linebacker. Yeah, uh, as you'll see on his film, it's a lot of running back. Uh, you know, he's a kid that if we really wanted to, he could play running back here, but we also – We've worked with him. We know he's, he's going to end up being a linebacker for us. And that's what we like. We like kids that can play multiple positions. I mean, if you were to watch this tape, his film's as good as any running back that we've, that we've had that's played running back for us. But this is the type of athlete we like playing the inside linebacker spot. You know, he's got to be athletic enough to be able to do what we want in the pass game, but big, big enough and physical enough to do the run stuff. Uh, the other nice area where, where – we will enjoy him is on special teams. Here he is returning a punt. Uh, you know, he's just an excellent, excellent football player. Um, we, you know, went out, saw him and his family a couple weeks ago, got some great barbecue. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good place to go to get barbecue. But, uh, you know, Milton's a kid who, who we expect big things from. And, and we have a lot of linebackers on the team. You know, yeah. you look at T.J. Hall, he didn't play linebacker. You know, little things like that, you know, where, where they're just good football players and he's instinctive. And I think you have to be instinctive to play linebacker. And as you watch him play, he fits that. He, he does that. And, and so, you know, we're, we're excited for him. I think he's going to be next in a long line of, uh, you know, pretty dominant inside linebackers we've had. And the tape last year from Trevor Thompson from the same school coach certainly looked impressive, and he certainly lived up to his billing his freshman year. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, Trevor was a, was a great player for us as a freshman. Did you know probably played as much, if not more, than any yeah. other freshman. So it's a good quality program. And again, that's another one of those. You know, you get into that area, you get into that high school, and there's talent out there. You know, and that's another area of the country that hey, not everyone's going out there. Colgate is. And we're seeing benefits from it. So, uh, you know, now we got two from that school. Hopefully we can keep expanding that area out there. Uh, Coach Olson went out there, did a real nice job uh, kind of cultivating that relationship. And uh, anytime you can do that and get kids who kind of know each other. And, you know, again, that's how you do it. You know, hey, I have a friend who plays. And, you know, those two knew, knew each other, made the recruiting process a little bit easier. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep that growing. 
Let's go down south, Coach, to Georgia. The top name of the class, at least he has my vote, Shiva Putagunta, Coach. Yeah, Shiva is an excellent player for us. Um, you know, when you look at him and you look at what he does, he's he's not the tallest guy in the world by by you know by that by offensive line measures. He's six three. He's a good sized kid for us. We never really cared about that, but he can move. He can finish. Um, you know, he he does everything that we need our inside guys to be able to do. He can run. Uh, when he gets to the second level, he's got great feet, great finish, uh, and that's the mold we've been successful with. Uh, he actually had uh, he had an offer from Jacksonville State, which is one wow. of the you know one of the premier FCS programs that we were able to beat on. Coach Dunley went down, uh, you know, did a great job. We wanted that was another area this year we made a little bit of a point of emphasis. Traditionally, we had had gotten a lot of kids from Atlanta, we'd gotten away from it a little bit, so to get somebody down there and kind of start that go going again was important to us. And, and I can't think of a better guy than Shiva. I, I, I think that he, you know, when you draw the mold of linemen that have been successful here, that's exactly what it looks like. And as far as the South is concerned, Coach, it's not about quantity, but it's certainly about quality this year. One other kid to talk about from Florida, John Cox. I've seen some tape on him, and he re looks really impressive. Yeah, he's coach. the real deal. Uh, running back for us uh, from, from down uh, – down near Lake Okeechobee, uh, great kid, great story. Kid gets up every day at 5.30 to get to the gym to work out and to study. Uh, he's, he's again, and you're going to see him. He fits our mold of running back. He's a not the tallest kid in the world, but he's a big kid. He can run between the tackles. He's got some serious finishing speed, which is something that uh, – that that is nice to see you know that's the that's the next step we're taking with these running backs we used to just be the big guys but now they're big guys who can finish which is great um and yeah you know there's only one from florida but but if you're going to get into with only a certain number of scholarships certain number of roster spots you know if we're going to go to detroit if we're going to go to kansas city if we're going to go to these new areas somewhere has to take the hit a little bit because you yeah. have a limited number of scholarships so you know rather than getting eight or nine out of Florida like we used to you know might be one two or three but they're going to be quality kids yeah. and it opens the door for other parts of the country and and John certainly is uh you know he's going to fit re in real well for us in our backfield and uh you know I'm excited to see him with the ball in his hands that's for sure the New England region is up next coach let's start with a kid from Connecticut wide receiver Sean Emile yeah Sean is uh you know he's at the Brunswick school uh another kid who fits what we're looking for he runs great routes um, he's a football kid. You talk to him, he really enjoys the game. Um, I've had a chance to, to see him a couple times in person and, and plays is, this is good quality football. Uh, you know, you see him going up, get, getting the ball, making plays in space. Again, just, you know, you do it long enough, you have kind of the blueprint for the type of kid that you're looking for to kind of play each position a, a on the offense. And, and he's going to fit in well in that outside receiver. Um, you talk to the kid. He was always, what can I do? I'll play defense. I'll do whatever you need me to do. A lot of schools talked to him about playing defense. But uh, another kid who came to our camp, so we had a chance to work with him live and realize, yeah, this is the kid we want. And, uh, you know, those, those prep school kids traditionally have done pretty well here. So we're excited to see what he does. Next up from Mashpee High School, offensive lineman Ben Bonenberger. Yeah, Ben, as you look at this, uh, what, what, what you like about your O-lineman is when we can show a film of an offensive lineman and, and some of his highlights are playing defense, that means he's athletic. That means he's got good leverage. Um, he's going to be another guy who, uh, you know, whether he plays inside or whether he plays outside, he possesses everything that we're looking for as far as, you know, being able to bend, being able to explode, being able to run, being able to have the feet to do what we want at the second level. Um, strong kid. He's already like 285, 290 wow. pounds. So he's going to be a kid who's going to come in physically ready to play. Um, and on a side note, um, they, he's a fisherman and uh, went to his house and we had oysters that he caught with scallops that he caught. And uh, just, uh, you know, that, that was a great home visit there. But, um, you know, again, y when, you, when you have a system that you recruit to, you can go ahead and, and, and take a kid who's not 6'6", but plays the way you want him to play. And that, that's how we've been successful on the offensive line. And Ben's another one who kind of fits that mold of just a, you know, kind of like Jack was last year, just a, just a solid, good yeah. physical football player that has some coil to him and finishes. One tight end on the list, Coach, to add to the already stellar tight end core that Colgate has here, Mike Bavino from Deerfield Academy. Yeah, a PG kid, which is nice. It's like he got a red shirt. Uh, his dad's a, a well-known high school and prep school football coach down there. 
Um, this is kind of the, the perfect package for us. Another kid, I ke it's getting a little bit redundant, but he came to our camp so we could work with him. Because as you look, I mean, it's not a lot of true hand down tight ends anymore. And so you see a lot of this. He's playing, you know, standing up out in space. And certainly you can see he can run, he can catch, he can do everything that you're looking for. But we had a chance to work with him in camp to make sure he could do the blocking part of things. And, and he does it really well. And what we like about him is he's already 245 pounds. So he's big enough um, to be able to do what we asked that position to do. He's got good strength. Obviously, on, you know, you see on the film, he's got great ball skills, but we were able to take a camp and Coach Dow was able to evaluate him as a, as a potential blocker, which is a, a tight end in our offense. That's what you have to do. So he's one of those guys who kind of – who does both. You know, he can, he can catch the ball and make those plays in space, but we also know at the end of the day that he's going to be able to hold up in the run game. Next region, Coach, New York, New Jersey, and let's go to the Hun School in Princeton, New Jersey for wide receiver Josh Zott. Yeah, Josh is another kid – in that Thomas Ives mold. I mean, when you watch him, he's a bigger kid, goes up, gets the football, and, and got a big catch radius, you know. Uh, anytime you get size on a wideout with, with, vertical, with verticality, he can jump, he's got long arms. Uh, trust me, that's a quarterback's friend. You know, you get that big radius to get the ball near, he can go up and get it. Uh, football's in his family. His dad played at Penn State, played with the Kansas City Chiefs, played with the New York Jets, actually works for the New York Jets. Um, he's an offensive lineman, so obviously, you know, it's going to be a little different position for us. But, uh, you know, he's certainly a kid here who's going to fit in again with, with what we're looking for at the wide receiver position. And, and he's, he's a kid who has shown the ability to make big plays, but also does little things. I know that, you know, we only have a couple plays of each kid, but he's one of the kids on his highlight tape. The first play of his tape that we saw, he caught a pass and just ran over everybody. People couldn't tackle him, you know, so we know he's got that physicality that our wide receivers need. We know he's going to block for you in the run game, and you can tell there he's a, he's a threat to go up and get the football. So, uh, you know, overall, I think we've done a nice job with the wide receiver position in this class because we, we do have a lot of kids who are going to be seniors. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to stay a year ahead. You know, yeah. you don't want to replace seniors with freshmen necessarily. You want to place them with sophomores. So uh, we did a pretty good job. I thought the coaches did a good job this year of, you know, identifying that and making sure we got the numbers and quality at that position. Let's say New Jersey coach with offensive lineman Mike Griggs. What makes him a good fit for Colgate coach? Um, he, first of all, he's center, which is a which is a unique skill. Uh, great wrestler, and and to me, if you get a kid who's a wrestler, I I think that it lends itself to being a great offensive lineman. He, you know, he knows how to use his strength. He knows how to use his opponent against him. Uh, and you know, I went down and actually watched him practice wrestling, and that's certainly something I couldn't do. <laughs> but uh, he he showed you know great strength, great flexibility, great toughness. Uh, you, you describe it an offensive lineman, you know, and as you watch him play, you know, he, he's a kid, you put his film on, they all look the same. He's going to snap the ball. He's going to coil his hips and come off and snap at you, which, which I don't know why you wouldn't want that, you know. So uh, he fits that mold of a Col Colgate offensive lineman. And, you know, one of the things we wanted to do this year was really – add to the depth of the offensive line and mm -hmm. almost recruit a whole nother line, you know, because you can never have enough of yeah. those guys, you know. So I think we, we came pretty close to doing that. Um, hopefully we've built a foundation on the offensive line moving forward for the next couple of years to where we kind of have a good base of, of young kids who can do it. But he's certainly a kid who's going to come in. And, and, again, the fact that you're snapping the ball is a, a little bit of a skill, and he's shown he can do it. So, um, you know, we're, that, we're real excited about him. Staying in New York State now, Coach, talk about linebacker Jared Petrichick. Jared, uh, he's going to be a lot like Wiz. We, we have him listed as a linebacker, but you're going to see he's playing safety in, in high school. And, he pl and um, you know, he is – but his future is at linebacker. I call it – he is just a pure football player. You talk to this kid, you get excited about him playing football for you. He loves defense. He loves to hit. He's going to be absolutely a force on special teams. Uh, you know, you, you just – you look at him and you say, boy, I can really see – I can really see his future four years of what he's going to become. And – uh, you know, these are the kids you win with, you know, and and he just he came on his visit and, and, he, and you just knew this kid fits in with our players. He fits in with the coaches. He know he, he's exactly what we're looking for. And then when you watch him play, he obviously you got to have the physical ability, which he does. He can run. He can cover ground. He'll stick his face in and tackle you. He will play to the whistle. Um, you know, I think it, I think four years from now, we're going to look back and say, you know, wow, that kid really came in and did everything we were looking for him to do. We're real excited in, by him. And again, you know, he's right down the road. So to get a kind of yeah. a local kid is that's always a plus. We're done with the regions now, Coach. We're just going to Pennsylvania straight up. And six kids coming to Colgate from the state of Pennsylvania in this recruiting class, Coach. Let's start with offensive lineman Javion Queen. Uh, Javion, you know, Altoona High School. Um, he's a kid, when you stand next to him and you ask him how much he weighs, you, you're expecting for him to say 240, and he says 280. Uh, you know, he, he's a basketball player, so he's got great feet. He's long. 
He's uh, physical. He's strong. Everything, everything about him shows the great upside for us at tackle for our, for our positions. You know, you watch him play. He can, he can extend his arms and pass protect. He can come off the ball, fire off at you, and finish a block in the run game. And this, the, the, you know, the ceiling for him physically, you know, he's 285, like I said, now. And, and you know, it doesn't look it. You know, he's going to be a 315-pound kid who can move his feet and is physical and, uh, you know, is really into football. So, you know. Again, just kind of building that future of the offensive line. I think we've done a pretty good job this year of, of making sure that we've got a real solid group, and Javion certainly is, uh, you know, going to be an anchor of that. And giving Shiva a run for his money is top name in this recruiting class, Coach. Defensive lineman Coleman Coco. <laughs> Talk about Coleman. Coleman is another guy who came to our camp. Um, you know, uh, again, we're it's a long list of guys who've done it. Um, really showed out at camp that what he could do, his motor is extremely high, which is wanting a defensive lineman, great feet, great ability to get to the quarterback, great finisher. His, his body is going to absolutely, you know, he's already a, a big kid, but he's going to be, you know, an even bigger kid. You know, <laughs> yeah. he loves to lift weights. Uh, he's got great get off to get after the quarterback. Um, you know, my favorite thing when he came here for camp, um, you know, he asked all about the GATA that we like to use, you know, and when we told him what that was, he's like, I want in, you know, he's got just got that high motor. I want to get after people. I want to play football. I'm serious about football. And, um, you know, I think, I think he's, he's a guy who's going to come in and, and really commit everything he's got to the program. And, uh, I agree top name too, uh, especially at uh, Christmas time. That was a good, that was a good name to announce. Since one of the best defensive ends in Colgate football history is graduating coach and moving on and Pat Afrie, you definitely need more depth there, and you're adding that with E.J. Simmons. Yeah, E.J. was another guy who signed today. Um, you know, we did, coaches did a really nice job. We took a look at where we were after the December signing period and said, what are our needs? You know, well, he said, well, let's get the one more lineman on offense. Let's get a pass rushing defensive end on defense and a defensive back. And EJ is the exact mold of a kid that you can see, you know, the, the Nick Wheeler, the Pat Afrie future for this kid is, is he's a little bit undersized right now, but he's going to get bigger. He has the other part of things. It's easy to get a kid bigger and stronger. Coach Helso will do that. But you got to make sure you're starting with the right material of a kid who has the athletic ability to get after the quarterback, who has the desire to, to, to be great on the edge and do all that and has the, has the arm length and all the foot speed. And he checked all those boxes for us. And, um, you know, we're real excited to get him. Uh, you know, Coach DeCosti, obviously, uh, he, you know, he does a great job in that area. Uh, that's not an easy area to recruit because yeah. you're right down near yeah. the rest of the schools in our conference. And he's able to get, you know, to get quality kids out of that area. And, and I think EJ is going to be a kid who in a couple of years we're going to look back and he's going to be on that same track that those other kids took. Tell us about the next young talent on the list, a linebacker from North Pocono High School, Coach. Uh -huh. Mr. Gahan. You know, uh, JC is uh, uh, a lot like a lot like Petrichik is he is a football player. You watch him. You know, he's played a bunch of different positions. He's he's an, he came to our first camp last year in, in June. And when he left the camp, we just said that kid's the best player at camp. He was playing a bunch of different positions. He played some running back. He played some wide receiver. He obviously played some outside linebacker. Uh, he's just a great football player. And so when you can get a kid like that, you, you say, let's get him. And then you, then you worry about it later as far as, as what exactly he's going to play. Um, you know, we're going to play him at linebacker right now, see where that goes. And uh, maybe he'll stay there. Maybe he'll move somewhere else. But, again, he's just a, a really good football player, good pedigree. His dad played at Syracuse. Um, so he's a football kid. Um, another guy who I'd be totally shocked if at the end of the year he's not on all of our special teams as a freshman. You know, just a kid who loves to play the game. And to me, uh, Colgate's been successful for a long period of time, long before I got here, yeah. uh, of guys that just love football and love to play and love to practice. And, and, and JC's going to fit right in with that. Now we go from JC to JT. JT Howard, talk about this defensive back. Another same type kid, you know. Um, did a little bit of everything in high school, played some running back, played some wide receiver, played some DB. Um, you know, I, I would use the term scrappy. He just he gets the job done. You know, you, and when you watch him play, he's got he's got good quickness. He'll stick his face in and make a tackle. Obviously, he's going to get bigger and stronger when he gets here. But he shows that it's not always about the measurables. You know, he's he's a kid. He's he's. Like I said, he's not the biggest kid in the world right now. He will get bigger, but he's got what you need. Uh, you know, he will – he'll put the time in to get bigger and stronger, but you can't teach, you know, vision. You can't teach agility. You can't teach, you know, the ability to break on a ball, and that's what he has. And, and it w I think that it was an important year for us in the defensive backfield to make sure we sign 
not only uh, uh, you know the number of kids, but the right kids. And he fits in with this class of DBs of, of guys that are going to kind of be our future. So you know, I'm excited. And another important signee as far as the defensive backs are concerned, Will Gruber from Hickory High School in Pennsylvania. Yes, Will is uh, another guy. He came to our second camp last year, and we kind of left saying the same thing about him. He's like, wow, this kid just can play. When you watch him, he's making plays all over the field at wide receiver. He's making plays at corner. Uh, he's got great ball skills, which obviously is what you want in a defensive back. He's a track guy, so he, uh, you know, he knows how to run. He's, he's, he's going to do some great things as a senior, uh, this spring in track. I told him I'd come down and watch him if I get a chance. Um, he's another guy who's going to be all over special teams, and at the end of the day, will be playing corner and safety for us. Uh, you know, that's, the, that's the advantage of camps now. You get a kid to your camp, you watch him play live, and, and you know, anyone can put a highlight film together and, and look good, I guess. But you know, when, you, when you have a chance to get a kid, evaluate him at your camp, coach him yeah. at your camp, uh, you know, we knew right then, you know, after the camp, we said, this is a, t this is a kid we're going to want. He fits in great. Last year when we were sitting here, Coach, the big question was who's going to be quarterback. That question was obviously answered with Grant Brenneman. Do you feel this class needed to answer questions, or do you think this was more of a depth recruiting class and, you know, talented kids, if, if they make it, then they'll play right away, but not really from a need aspect, more of a d uh, need of depth as far as all the talent is already on this Colgate football roster. Yeah, I would say uh, that's a good point, and I, I would say you're right. I think that this is a year more about depth and future. Um, you know, we have a lot of guys coming back. Obviously, we're going to lose a lot of kids next year, so you want to be able to be able to have guys that come in and, t and take over, again, as sophomores, not as freshmen. That being said, uh, we've had the Patriot League Rookie of the Year the last two years, so I, maybe the Patriot League Rookie of the Year is somewhere on that film. Um, but it is nice as a coach to say we don't have that question mark. Obviously, you know, anyone that has been around the program knew that last year that was the first question I got from anybody. Who's your quarterback? What's your quarterback going to be? What's your quarterback situation? And rightfully so. They should have asked those questions. Well, obviously, we answered that question, um, and we actually have a little bit of depth there. That's why you don't see a quarterback on this list. Uh, we don't need one, you know. Uh, we had a situation um, where we, you know, with Jake Froshauer that we're going to be okay mm -hmm. uh, at that position to where we don't we didn't need uh, to recruit a quarterback this year. We didn't want to recruit. We didn't try. You know, that wasn't something that we wanted. So as you look at this class top to bottom, uh, what I think the coaches did a really good job with what is we had specific needs that we needed to get filled, and we got them filled, and we got them filled with the guys we wanted. It was very, it was a very good year for us in that we didn't have to get too far down any list to get the guy that we've been targeting for a long time. So, um, again, while there's nobody who we say, boy, he's going to have to come in and start, uh, you know, I've been here a long time, and every year somebody, somebody who's a freshman ends up playing. It just happens through injury, through whatever, that one of these guys is going to play next year. You don't know who it is, but the good thing is we feel like we've recruited guys who, who if it is them and the number's called, they're going to be okay. But, you know, a few less gray hairs this year <laughs> not having to worry about who my quarterback is. Colgate football finished red hot last season, Coach. How did that momentum carry into the offseason? Well, anytime you can end a year, you know, hoisting a trophy and, and on fi a five-game win streak, uh, it gives you a good feeling in the offseason. I think a lot of guys, um, when I look at this team, though, I was happy with the fact that, you know, yeah, we got the, we got the trophy and we get the rings, but, you know, they wanted, they wanted more. They wanted to get to the playoffs. They wanted to show we can compete at a national level, and that didn't happen. And I think that they're motivated – to, to take that next step next year. Obviously, you know, we sat here two years ago after the 2015 season talking about everybody coming back from that season mm -hmm. and how good things were going to be, and we didn't get it done. And I think that this group, you know, they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that that doesn't happen again, that we take that next step. And, you know, yeah, we have a lot of guys back from a team that won a lot of games. We have momentum, but at the end of the day, you know, in, in 2018, we've got no wins, you know, and we have to make sure that we go out and earn everything we get. Um, and I think this group will do that. And, and let's be honest, I'd rather do that on a five-game win streak than a five-game losing streak. Um, so it's a good feeling. You know, there's positive energy around the program. Um, and now um, we got to take that hunger, take that energy, and, and just, you know, take that next step next year. Now that the future Raiders have been announced and National Signing Day is wrapping up, Coach, what's next for Colgate football? Well, the next step will be, uh, you know, our kids have been back. They've been lifting. Uh, they lift four days a week. Then starting next week, we'll do some of our morning conditioning type stuff um, in the field house just to get ready for spring practice. And then we will have spring break. And then right after spring break, we'll get into the spring practice. So, you know, like I said at the beginning, it's just kind of a cycle. The football year, it's, it's a cycle of football, recruiting, 
training, spring football, back to recruiting. And, uh, you know, so this is a time of year where, you know, I, again, spring football is one of my favorite parts of the year. You're coaching for coach's sake. You get to evaluate some kids that you probably didn't have a chance to look at during the regular season. And, you know, now you can see these young guys, what they can do. And, uh, uh, you know, so these guys, as you picture them coming in, you know, it'll be them doing it next year, which is always exciting. You know, it, the four years goes by quick. You know, some of these kids that are graduating this year, I can remember sitting here talking about them when they were like this. And uh, it, it's just amazing how quick that time goes by. And you're preparing all these players for a rather easy schedule again in 2018, Coach. You're certainly not your best friend as far as the schedule is concerned. Yeah, you know, that's just that's just what we do here. And, 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 and at the end of the day, I think that that prepares us. You know, obviously we open with a conference game next year, which is – something that's kind of new to us. You yeah. know, we open with Holy Cross, who's going to have a brand new coach. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions there. But, you know, you look at our non-league schedule. Obviously, we have Cornell, which is a great rival. Uh, you know, you never want to lose that one. And then, you, you know, you got Furman, you got William and Mary, New Hampshire, and Army. And, and that's, uh, that's as daunting of a task as you're going to yeah. have. And, again, it focuses your kids that you have to play as well as, 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 well as you can possibly play every week in those games. You got to be ready to go. Um, you know, is, is it is it challenging? Is it does it does it give you some some pause at times? Yes, and you know when you get a couple injuries like we did this year, yeah. does things kind of sometimes not line up? Yeah, but it also teaches you to overcome things. You know, and and you know if you look at the the last couple of years, we've started with a you know a, a one and two, a one and three, an zero oh and three record, and they've been able to finish strong. And and I think that says a lot about the character of the kids in this team. You know, I think a lot of uh, you know I think our team when you look at the season we just had. You know, there's a lot of teams in this country who would have who would have packed it in after that Lehigh game. You know, to get the record where it was down yeah. to one and four, and to lose it, you know, the way we did with some of the calls that went against us. Um, you know, that could that could end a lot of team season. And this team doubled down. Uh, they had the best practice of the season the Monday after the Lehigh game, and I'm not just saying that. And uh, we came out, and obviously, the rest of the season, I think the average score was something like 37 to 5 and, um, you know, finishing with five straight wins. So, you know, there's something to, there's something to be said from overcoming that. And it's okay to, it's okay to challenge yourself yeah. and, and not always take the easy way. And, uh, you know, and, and that's something that Colgate takes great pride in and, and, and we take great pride in as a program. And, and we'll rise to the challenge next year and we'll get after every team on a schedule and see what happens. Yeah, and with the aggressive schedule, I know that's a speculation, but do you feel a schedule like that prepares you to play your best football at the end of the season? I think so. You know, I think so. You know, when when the bar is high, you got to jump high. And and so if you come out at the start of the season and say, hey, we got to get up and, and play these games, it, again, it sets kind of an expectation of practice, of expectation of rehab, of lifting, of this is what it's going to take. And then by the time you get in October, November, they're already there. And so, yeah, I, I agree. I think that it gets you ready. And then if you are lucky enough to make the playoffs, you're kind of not overwhelmed by those teams you're going to see maybe even in the second round. You know, you know you're not overwhelmed. You've played some teams. You know, Army won 10 games in a bowl last year. I mean, yeah. so we're going to take them on on our last regular season game. So, if we're, again, if we're lucky enough to be in the playoffs, you're not going to play anybody better than that in the first round yeah. of the playoffs. So, uh, you know, it has its payoffs. It's, it's a challenge, and, and but it definitely has its payoffs. Coach, as always, this is a lot of fun. We'll be talking before you know it. Thank you so much, and uh, best of luck. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this. That is Colgate head football coach Dan Hunt, and this is Eric Melanoski. Until next time, be proud to wear the maroon and white. Patriot League Network on Stadium.